Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell. Welcome to part two of my vintage Hot Wheels pickup from my local Craigslist. I paid um, roughly, well, I paid $120 for all 22 of these vintage Hot Wheels vehicles, which, which averages out to just under six dollars each which is a steal for these cars anytime you can pick up you know hot wheels cars that are over 30 years old in mint condition in their packaging like this for less than six bucks oh yeah that's a steal you better grab them because these normally go for about i don't know it depends on the car but they normally go for between anywhere from 25 to 60 bucks a piece. So the fact that I only pay roughly, you know, just under $6 a piece for each one of these Hot Wheels cars, that was a steal. And I'm so happy that I got these cars. At a later time, I do plan on removing them from their package, from the blister packs, and I'm going to put them in nice uh, dust-proof uh, display cases. So. Yeah. Uh, let me get out my pointer. I'm going to be showing all 20, uh, 22 of these vintage Hot Wheels cars today, including one of the original High Rakers. Okay. Um, the five military vehicles right here. These are very hard to come by. They were only made for about two years. And for some reason, Mattel Toy Company discontinued them. They stopped making them. So these military vehicles like this um, were only produced for about a two-year period. The same thing is true with these construction vehicles like this that were made out of mostly all die-cast metal. Later issues of these construction vehicles were mostly plastic, whereas these early ones here are mostly made out of die cast metal. They're a lot heavier, a lot nicer. Um, also we have two more of the original ultra hot cars that came out. These two here. And so I'm gonna be I'm gonna show each one of these casting separately and uh, talk a little bit a little bit about each one, you know, what I know about them. So, let's get started. first uh, vintage Hot Wheels car that I have to show you is the Rolls-Royce Phantom 2 in this beautiful metal flake blue paint job, white wall tires, classic Krager mags, just absolutely gorgeous car, metal body, metal chassis of course um, absolutely gorgeous car the way that was made I mean it's just absolutely gorgeous yeah now I have the matchbox model of yesteryear version of this car it's a convertible it doesn't have to have the roof on it but it has a rumble seat that opens up so that would have been cool of if Mattel Toy Company would have put the, an opening rumble seat in the back on this one. That would have made this car really pop. But it's still a nice looking car. It's one of my favorite vintage Hot Wheels of all time from the 1980s. It's just a really nice Hot Wheels car. It, it really is. The Rolls Royce Phantom II. Now I had to pay $10 to get this car. This is one of the cars that I paid um, $10 for. 
There's your copyright information, and I believe this one was made in Malaysia. Okay. All right, next up, um, I like all the Hot Wheels that I have, and, and you know, all the 45 of these Hot Wheels that I bought so far. Um, this here is the Fat Fendered 40 in a beautiful uh, metallic ruby red paint job. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I know that this is not the first issue because it says new paint style. So, but it's still a beautiful car. I really love this car. It's one of my all-time, one of my all-time favorite Hot Wheels. Yeah, it's got a metal chassis, metal body. You know, the classic black walls with the Kruger mags. It's just a beautiful car. Absolutely gorgeous car. <clears throat> now, notice on these early Hot Wheels cars, like some of these heavy ones here, they had a rubber band around it that secured it to this cardboard and I guess that was to keep it from shaking around inside the blister pack but over time the rubber band probably dried out and broke you know so yeah that's what happened there <laughs> but the car is bent in the package and there's the back of the packaging All right, next up, we have a Hot Wheels car that I am trying to get every variation of, and that's the 65 Mustang convertible. Um, metal chassis, of course, metal body, opening hood. It's just an absolutely gorgeous Hot Wheel. It's got the white wall, you know, the new white wall tires. Classic Kreger mags. I mean, it's just a really nice looking, you know, Hot Wheels car. Really, I really like the 65 Mustang. I always have. It's just so nice. Just so nice. Now, the new ones, um, they no longer have a metal chassis. It's a plastic chassis now, and the hood no longer opens up. And, uh, yeah. Mattel is really cheapening these Hot Wheels cars, and yet they have the nerve to charge an extra 20 to 25 cents for the basic line. And yeah, I don't like what they're doing. I don't like it at all. I usually do not buy any of the new Hot Wheels because they're garbage. They're just garbage. I just, I just don't buy them. I prefer to spend my money on these older vintage Hot Wheels, you know? I think they're nicer, they're better made, uh, they have character, and there's history behind these older vintage Hot Wheels cars. All right, the next car is this um, split window. What is, what is that? 63 Corvette? Let me get my magnifying glass. Yeah, split window. Um, 63 Corvette. Okay, and this is a high raker. It's got the metal chassis, and the wheels can be raised or lowered. You can adjust the rake of the car. Okay. And, uh, yeah, it's a nice looking car. Metal body, metal chassis. Now, the new versions of the Split Wendell uh, 63 Corvette, um, they no longer have a metal chassis. They now have a plastic chassis, okay? So, yeah, I don't even waste my money on those. I just continue buying these older ones. They're really nice. Now, Mattel, when they did away with the high rakers, when they discontinued the high rakers, um, they changed this metal chassis where it's all metal. Even this part here is all metal, you know? And then I think sometime in the mid 90s mid to late 90s they changed this casting towards a plastic chassis with metal body they really cheapened this hot wheel yeah all right the next car um, 
is a Stutz Blackhawk. I believe this is the second variation of this car. The first variation, I believe, is the gray one, the silver gray one. Uh, and this is the second variation of this car. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comments. But if memory serves me correctly, this is the second variation of this car, the Stutz Blackhawk. Very nice car, all die-cast metal. The chassis is die-cast metal, of course. The body is die-cast metal. It's got your classic black walls with the Kreger mags. These are my favorite wheels. Uh, of, you know, my favorite of the Hot Wheels wheels, besides the red lines. And, uh, yeah, I really like, I like the way the spare tire was done in the rear. That's really cool looking. Very nice. And there is the back of the packaging, in case you want to read that pertinent information. All right, next up um, is the Talbot Lago. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And this is a heavy car. All heavy die-cast metal body and chassis. It's a very heavy, well-made Hot Wheel. I just love that all-white paint job. It just looks so beautiful. I love that car. Just a really nice-looking car in white. It really is. Absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous car. It was bought at Buy Mark for only 83 cents. 83 cents, people. Okay. For a metal body, metal chassis, right? And today, we're buying Hot Wheels cars that are mostly plastic with some metal parts for $1.20, $1.25. Only a stupid person does that. So stop it. Stop wasting your money. The new Hot Wheels are garbage. Even the treasure hunts and super treasure hunts. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Stop putting unnecessary wear and tear on your vehicle and using up so much gas, running all over town looking for treasure hunts and super treasure hunts. Only a stupid person does that. Don't do it. That's just one of the many selling gimmicks that Mattel uses to get you dumbasses running all over town looking for these cars. Now, stop it. A true collector of Hot Wheels, they don't buy the new crap. Yes, you heard that right. They instead invest their money in these older, better made Hot Wheels. Okay, they're higher quality, they have character. You know, they're better made, and they have history behind them. Okay? History. It's better to spend a little bit more money and buy these older Hot Wheels. These are very nice. This is something that you can be proud of to add to your collection. Okay? Um, there's the back of that card right there. Back of that card. All right, up next is one of my all-time favorite Hot Wheels, and that's the 32 Ford Delivery. I have many different variations of this Hot Wheel. It's one of my all-time favorite Hot Wheels, and in an upcoming video or videos, I'm going to show you all the different variations that I have of this uh, Ford Delivery truck. It's really, really nice. I've always loved this model really nice. I mean, look at that metal chassis, metal body. You know, it's just a nice looking Hot Wheel. Okay? Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Love that car. Hot Wheels delivery. Yes, it is. Hot Wheels from Mattel. That's right. This is back when Mattel made really nice Hot Wheels cars. And those are all, all the different Hot Wheels that you can get for 
the 19, what, 1989 year. Let me get a little bit closer. You can read that, all the different models that you could get for 1989. I might try to put that whole set together, but I don't know. Some of those cars are ugly. And I'm a firm believer, only buy what you like. Buying to complete a set is a wrong is one of the wrong reasons for buying a Hot Wheels car or a Matchbox for that matter. Only buy a Hot Wheels car or a Matchbox car because you like it. Not because it's part of a set, not because it's a treasure hunt, not because it's a super treasure hunt, unless you plan on reselling it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, there's that car. The 32 Ford delivery. Okay, now it's time for a quick commercial break and I will be right back. All right. Uh, next up, are five of the Action Command military vehicles. As I said before, these vehicles were only released for two years, and then Mattel Toy Company, for some reason, they discontinued them, and I have not seen them since. This here is the Troop Convoy truck. And I think it's a very nice truck. Metal body. Uh, yeah, metal body. Uh, metal. I believe that's a metal chassis. Yeah. Um, this canopy here is plastic. And so is the roof of the truck. That's plastic. But the rest of it is all um, die cast metal. Really nice. Uh, troop convoy truck. All right, next up is one of my favorite vehicles from the Action Command series, and that's this tank gunner. Uh, it's like a, a half-track armored vehicle with an anti-aircraft gun in the back. Twin anti-aircraft guns in the back. I mean, just look at that. Oh man, that is so nice. So nice. I also have in my collection, which I will show in a later video, I have the snow camouflage version of this, which is mainly grays and whites and blacks, so that it blends in with, with, with a snowy terrain. And that one's really cool looking too. But just look at that. The Tank Gunner. Oh, yeah, mostly die-cast metal. Yeah, I think even the chassis is metal. Yeah, the chassis is metal, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's really nice. Only the track part's plastic. That part right there is plastic. And, of course, the gun is plastic. The rest of it appears to be all die-cast metal. Very nicely made. Very, very nice. Oh, here's the back of the packaging. Just want to make sure you can see that. You know, the back of the packaging, right? Okay. Um, the next one is another one of my favorite vehicles from the Action Command series. And that's the rocket tank. The rocket does come off, so a lot of times when you find these loose, uh, the rocket will be missing. You know, um, the, the rockets are interchangeable, and the rockets did come in different colors. So that's one way that you can create your own variations, you know. <laughs> um, there is a version of this that I will be getting, and, I, and when I get it, I will show it on my channel. It's a beautiful, it's like gray and black or something like that. And then the, the rocket is red, it's really cool looking. I do plan on getting that one, and when I get it, I'll show it to you guys, because it's really cool. But that rocket tank is so cool. Look at that. Isn't that cool? 
It's just so nice. Love it. Back of the packaging. Maybe you can read some of that. All right, next up. I actually like I like all of these vehicles for the Action Command. I mean, <laughs> what am I talking about? You know, I like them all. This one here is the Command Tank. And this one came out in many different color, like camouflage variations. Because I know there's a black one like this. And there's also a snow-themed one, you know. But what's cool about this tank, okay, the gun does rotate. I think it's 360 degrees. It rotates. Uh, this gun barrel here rotates. The gun goes up and down, right? Um, the rear part, that door in the back folds down to reveal three soldiers inside. And it's really cool. This is a really cool tank. The action, wait, the command tank. Action Command Series. That's right. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So cool. So cool. Yeah, these have been discontinued. They are only made for about two years. And the last vehicle of the Action Command series that I'm showing in today's video, don't worry, I'll show more of these, uh, is the Assault Crawler. Yeah, this vehicle is really cool looking too. I mean, just look at that. That's so cool. Look at that. Got the gun on the top, and it's just neat the way it was made. Look at that. The way it was made. I mean, holy crap. That is so cool the way that was made so cool such a cool looking vehicle yeah such a cool looking vehicle just look at that All right, next up, um, we have uh, the Firebird Funny Car. Absolutely gorgeous, metallic, ruby red paint job right there. Absolutely gorgeous car. Um, I'll tell you some things about this car, though. It's got the smaller, well, the standard size black walls with Kruger mags on the front. It's got the larger tire version on the rear, so it has that natural rake. Um, if you know, okay, notice the Firebird. It's, it's yellow with a little bit of orange in the tampo. Now, the common variation of this Firebird also has that on the bird that's on the hood, and it has yellow headlights. This hard to find variation has an all yellow bird um, on the hood and it has white headlights, white and black headlights. This is a much rarer variation, much harder to find. Okay, the hood does open up, die cast metal chassis, heavy die cast metal body, uh, the blue windows that comes from Hong Kong. So, yeah, this is a very nice. Firebird funny car. Really nice. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. Really nice. All right. Next up, this is a really heavy Hot Wheel. We have the Rig Wrecker. This hot wheel there. Hey, you got to have a tow truck, right? You got to have a tow truck in your arsenal of Hot Wheels vehicles, you know. Got to have a tow truck. It's mostly all die cast metal. The chassis is die cast metal. Um, this part here, I believe, is die cast metal. The cab is die cast metal. I mean, it's just a nice, heavy 
truck. I mean, look at all that metal. I mean, oh my God. When's the last time you seen a Hot Wheel like this? Classic, you know, black walls with the Kreger mags, you know. I don't know if they would have Kreger mags on a real life truck like that, but hey, we have it in the Hot Wheels, you know. <laughs> but I really like this truck. It's really cool looking. Yeah. Hot Wheels from Mattel. That's right. This is back when Mattel made really nice Hot Wheels cars. Hot Wheels. That's right. All right. Now it's time for another quick commercial break. And I will be right back afterwards. All right, the next car, well, I should say a truck, is called the Big Rig. And it is a big rig. Um, now, even though it has a plastic chassis, uh, that body, that large body right there, oh my God, that's all die cast metal. This is one heavy, heavy truck. Look at that. One heavy truck. Man, <clears throat> has a classic um, black walls with the Kruger mags. Those are my favorite wheels, besides the red lines. Very nice looking truck. Back of the package. All right, the next two Hot Wheels are the construction vehicles. Uh, this one here is the Caterpillar Wheel Loader. <clears throat> um, the early variations like this, they were mostly all die-cast metal. Uh, later year models, um, you know, Mattel has slowly started replacing a lot of the die-cast metal with plastic. And you can definitely tell the difference between these early construction vehicles and the later issues because you can tell by the weight. This one's really heavy. It's mostly die cast metal. Only the the bucket part right there, or shovel part right there, uh, is plastic. But the rest of it's, you know, the chassis is metal, the body is all die cast metal. I mean it's just a really nice construction vehicle. Now these are hard to find in mint condition. Because these are the type of yellow goals that kid took out, you know, kids that took them out of the package, of course, and they played with these in the dirt. You know, I mean, this is what this type of vehicle was, you know, it was used, playing the dirt. You know, so not many of these have survived. These are actually hard to find that they in mint condition like this. Especially their early issues with metal chassis, mostly all metal body. I mean, these are very nice. There's the back of the packaging. The next one is a new model. Uh, it says new model on the packaging, which means that that is the very first issue of that model. The Caterpillar Earth Mover. Caterpillar Earth Mover. Very nice looking vehicle. I believe that's all, yeah, the chassis is all die cast metal. Just look at that. Most of the body is die cast metal. Okay. I think the only part of this um, construction vehicle, this workhorse's vehicle, that's plastic is the cab here and maybe this rear part here. But the rest of it, it's all die cast metal. Of course, the newer ones are mostly all plastic. I don't think they make these particular vehicles anymore. I haven't seen these in at least two decades. So, yeah, I don't think these were made for very long either. You know, these these uh, construction vehicles. This is mainly something that you would see in the Matchbox, you know, Matchbox vehicles, stuff like this. There's the back of the packaging. I just want to show you, you know, so you can read the copyright date and where it's made and maybe you want to see that. 
car wash and service center. Okay. All right. The next vehicle is the landlord. It is often seen on the front of, of this style packaging. It's one of the three vehicles that is seen on this packaging here. The landlord. Now normally I don't really I'm not really into fantasy vehicles, but some of the fantasy vehicles, like this one here, I think looks cool and I really like it. I think it's cool looking. It's got your basic black walls, normal size in the front, larger tire size in the back. Gives it that nice natural rake. Die cast metal bottom, you know, chassis. Die cast metal body. I mean, it's just a really nice looking fantasy Hot Wheels car. They don't make them like this anymore. The Landlord. Yeah, I love this car. Very nice. Oh, this one was made in Hong Kong. Okay, that one there was made in Hong Kong. Look at that. Now, during this time here, it doesn't really matter if the cars are made in Hong Kong or uh, Malaysia. A lot of people seem to think that if it's made in Hong Kong, it's an older version. No, that's not true. It's not true. Because Mattel Toy Company had factories both in Hong Kong and Malaysia, and both of the factories were producing the same cars at the same time. Same years. So some of them, I'm not talking about the exact same cars. Some of them will have a Hong Kong base. Some of them will have a Malaysia base. They were both made the same year, and they're part of the same set. So I wish you, you people would stop you know, uh, telling people that the Hong Kong base is older, the Malaysia base is newer. No, that's not true. Not true. Not during this time period, the 80s. A lot of the cars were made, even when they came out the same year, that they were made both in Hong Kong and Malaysia. So that doesn't really matter. What matters is the car itself and maybe the tempo or the wheel variation or whatever. That's what matters. What's stamped on the bottom, that doesn't really matter. Not really. There are certain rare instances where that does matter, and it makes it a very rare car. But most of the time, that does not matter. Doesn't matter. So stop you know, insinuating you know, that the, car, the Hot Wheels made it in Hong Kong are older and they're worth more. No, that's not true. It's not true. All right, the next car up um, is the Tricar X8. It's that car there. And I believe this car is based on the rocket car that Evil Knievel used to jump across, what, the Grand Canyon? I believe that's what this car is based on. Is that famous Evil Can Evil Knievel rocket car? In fact, I think the first variation of this car is the Evil Knievel rocket car, if if memory serves me correctly. But I got a few more variations of this car coming, and when I have you know have them all, I'm going to do a separate video where I show and talk about just this car here, and I'll take them out of the package. I'll show them on the turntable. But um, there's the last car that I showed. See, it's one of the three cars that are shown on, on the front of this style packaging. And, of course, I showed this, uh, what is that, uh, the Cadillac or whatever that is there. I think that's Cadillac. I showed that car in the last video. And I am going to be getting this fire engine here. I'll be getting that one, too. So, yeah, when I get it, I'll show it to you guys. Anyway, there's that car, the Tricar X8. Really cool car. Back of the packaging. All right, next up, the next two cars are part of the original um, Ultra Hot set. The very first Ultra Hots that appeared. This one here is the Jet Sweep X5. 
Now, a lot of people don't think too much of this car, but I think it's a really cool car. And I'm going to show you why when I take it out of the package in a future episode and show this car on the turntable. What's nice about this car is that this body raises to show that turbine jet engine, and it's really highly detailed. It also shows the driver's cockpit. It's really cool. This car is cool, and it is fast down the track. Okay? It's got an all die-cast metal body. Even the turbine engine is die-cast. Metal chassis, I and mean, it's just a really nice car. Now, there was only four variations. Okay, this car was only released and sold for a two-year period. Um, let me double-check the cop right there on the back. Yeah. This car was only produced and sold in 1985 and 1986. And there's four variations of this car. The first two variations, where it's orange right there, it's black on the first issue, first and second issue. On the third and fourth um, issue, it's orange. And the two variations of this one with the orange plastic, okay, this one's like the Zymax, or whatever you call it, the, uh, the unpainted body. And then the fourth variation looks the same, only the body is painted with metallic silver color, or it's a silver paint, metallic silver paint. But yeah, I think it's a really cool looking car, and it is one of the original ultra hot vehicles. This is one of the originals right here. It's really cool. Now, if memory serves me correctly, this ca the car with the black plastic, those two variations came out in 1985. And this car with the orange plastic came out in 1986. Well, it has a 1986 uh, copyright on the back of the packaging. The second car is also one of the original Ultra Hots. The Silver Bullet. This one has the hard to find uh, metallic silver paint job. This one here. It's got the metallic silver paint job. That's the third variation of this car. There's three variations of this car. The first variation has a darker, excuse me, a lighter, a light colored unpainted body. The second variation has an unpainted body, but it's a little bit darker. And then this third variation has a metallic silver painted body. And this is the one that I actually prefer. I actually like that. This is a heavy, very heavy car. Die cast metal body, die cast metal chassis. I mean, just look at all that metal. Wow. And it's got the really fast, ultra hot wheels. I mean, yeah. I'm very happy that, to add these to my collection. So now I have three of the original Hot Wheels. I mean, the Ultra Hot, so the Hot Wheels with Ultra Hot Wheels. I got three of the original ones. And I do plan on getting the rest of them. And when I get all of them, I'm going to make a special video showing the, all the Ultra Hots that came out for this first year. The original hot, uh, Ultra Hot Hot Wheels. I'm going to show all of them. So stay tuned for that exciting video. But look at that. There's the back of the packaging. And I showed the back of the packaging so you can see the copyright year, so you get an idea of when the car was released, and also shows where it was made. Now, like I said before, during this time period, it doesn't really matter if it's made in Hong Kong or Malaysia. They're both about the same value, you know, as far as value. Where it's made does not really affect the value on most of these cars. There are a few exceptions. You know, but for the most part, Hot Wheels during the 80s that were made in Hong Kong or Malaysia, they're worth about the same, same you know, amount of money. So, yeah. All right, the last car that I'm showing today, but don't worry, there's going to be a part three of this video, probably even a part four, um, is the Speed Seeker. This car here. Now, one of the original Ultra Hots is that the Speed Seeker is one of the original Ultra Hots. But it's, I think, um, 
it's got a different paint, like a gray paint job, if I remember correctly. And it's in the same style packaging as those other original Ultra Hots. But um, this is the Speed Seeker. This car started out during the Redline era as the Mantis. And the main difference between the Mantis and the Speed Seeker is that the Mantis has a metal engine coming out the back here. It has like exhaust, like metal exhaust pipes coming out the back, and it shows part of the motor. Whereas, you know, Mattel Toy Company, they decided to remove that as a cost-cutting measure so they can make more profit on this car because they're using less metal, right? And then they, when they did that, they changed the name to Speed Seeker. Yeah. Anyway, there's that car. Now, usually, when you see a packaging that has that white and pink, uh, you know, graphic like that, these are usually always from 1986. You don't even have to look at the back of the card to know. If you see a card that looks like this, that's from 1986. So let's flip it over and see if I'm full of crap. Yep, 1986, right there, boys and girls. You need to familiarize yourself with the packaging if you're going to be collecting Hot Wheels cars. Get familiar with the packaging. Okay? That's the Speed Seeker. Well, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Hans George Campbell, and until next time.